Okay, folks. I wanted to uh, take a small video here of one of my citrus trees. And uh, this is one of my tangelos. I love this tangelo. It's a dwarf variety. It's a Mineola tangelo grafted onto dwarfing rootstock. But sadly, I believe this this citrus tree is infected infected with uh, Huang Long Bing disease. The, uh, more commonly known as HLB or yellow dragon. This is the disease that's been destroying citrus all around Florida, sta the state of Florida. All my citrus trees have it. But let me just show you. Let me take the citrus tree. Sorry. Let me take my um my camera off the mount here so I can walk with it a bit better. I'm cognizant of the fact that video on a tripod is much more stable than it is on a on by hand but uh, I wanted to show you some of the evidence of this um, it's unfortunate that this has to happen there really is no way around it I, I think Florida is going to eventually lose its citrus state here's one here's one fruit right here see how it's misshapen see that that is typical of HLB disease uh, these other ones down here I had one that was really really bad the other day see that it's yeah it's too dark you can't see it but um let me try and get one that has more light exp more light exposure but this tree this tree does have HLB I am trying to combat it by adding a citrus foliar spray spraying the trees with a sit with a foliar spray that's supposed to be a fertilizer for the for the um, leaves. Apparently, the problem with HLB is that it's a bacterium transferred uh, from tree to tree through a little insect or by a little insect called the Asian citrus psyllid, which feeds on the young shoots and the leaves, the vascular system of the tree. So the the insect will actually bite a tree that's infected with HLB. It'll ingest the bacteria that's in the vascular system of the infected tree, and then it'll fly off and in and feed on another tree and thereby you know when it bites into the next leaf it'll actually it'll actually um, put it infect the other tree the same way it'll, it'll transfer the bacteria from its gut and, and its saliva into the vascular system of the new tree and uh, once it's in the vascular system of the tree there's nothing you can do about it if the tree doesn't have any kind of self-defense against it it will eventually die from this because the bacterium will actually prohibit the efficient transport of minerals and nutrients from the root systems all the way up to the leaves and back and back and forth so the tree will eventually die it's sad because citrus is one of the best crops you can have in florida unfortunately it's toast so yeah hlb this is my tangelo mineola tangelo let's see if i can i hate taking videos in this harsh morning sun but it's the only time I could do it because I just I couldn't do it late in the evening. I was busy yesterday. You can see there that little stem right there. Let me see if I can focus in on the middle of the screen here. Where is it? See that little stem? It's white, so it's not it's not able to focus on it. Why is autofocus not working here? Hang on, let me see what's wrong with this autofocus. Maybe I'm too close. Is it manual or auto? Here it is. Autofocus was off. That's why. Okay, so you see that little white piece right there? That is the stem of a, of a tangelo that I ripped off the other day and ate. It looked completely ripened. It was all beautiful, orange-hued. But the fruit was not very sweet, believe it or not. So that's another characteristic is that, you know, it, you, you start to see that the fruits don't actually have the uh, sweetness that they should have. And that's really disappointing. I was telling some family members that I think the future of citrus in Florida looks very, very grim. I don't think this will be a viable long-term crop for, for Florida anymore. I grew up in Florida. I've been here all my life. 
I've been here since 1970s. Since, actually, since 1970s when, when, we, when we came to Florida. And um, I remember the citrus industry in Florida before this whole disaster. It was, it was fantastic. I mean, there were citrus groves everywhere. And there were tons and tons of fruit produced every year here. I mean, millions of tons of citrus. I remember having citrus trees in my yard. It was, it was awesome. You could have oranges from your yard. Tangerines were common. Not anymore, though. Anyway, I wanted to show you another tree here. This is the one, the, the, the new tree that's been supplanting citrus in Florida. Let me just show it to you. It's my pride and joy. Mango! Mango season. Mango is awesome. This is a Glen Mango tree. And as you can see, it has flowers. Yay! I love mangoes. Mangoes are awesome fruit, man. This is a Glen Mango tree that has, that's flowered for the first time. I transplanted this tree um, from another part of my orchard earlier this year because last year we had a very cold spell during winter, very cold snap. It was below freezing and this tree got damaged significantly. A lot of its uh, a lot of its young growth had actually died back because of the cold. It was cold damaged and so I had to remove all my tropical trees from exposed locations in the orchard and move them here to the side of the house you can see let me just pan over here so you can see what I'm talking about this is the side of my house here it's a wall and this now we're in we're in the middle of winter here it's actually late December and you can see this wall is actually getting uh, some sunlight during the day and the theory is I can get this wall to heat up during the day act like a heat capacitor it will absorb this heat because it's cinder block and then during the night when the sun drops or uh, completely goes away and the, when the temperature starts to drop considerably the wall can radiate that heat back out and keep all these tropical trees a few degrees warmer than they would otherwise be and other locations in the orchard and hopefully hopefully that'll prevent their complete and total annihilation um, I expect to still lose branches every now and again you know, some new growth probably die back because of the cold, but it won't kill the tree, I'm hoping. And also, this spot right here is protected from the wind. So, part of, part of the problem with with the cold, in Florida, it doesn't get very cold, although it gets cold enough to be, to be, you know, to do damage to these trees, these tropical trees. But the wind, the wind factor is what really, really hurts, hurts the, these tropical trees. Because even though it could be, let's say, you know, 29, 32 degrees outside, the wind can not, can make, can actually push it to below zero and I know this because I have a I have a, a weather station in my orchard so I record temperatures every single day of the year every 30 seconds I record a temperature and I upload it to weather underground and I have a history of the of the temperatures in the orchard and I know that even when the wet when the uh, meteorological you know service says it's 32 degrees in my yard that's actually a few degrees cooler because of the wind factor the wind chill they call it so there it is, Glen Mango, and um, let me show you another little mango I have here. That is a really cool mango tree, the little one right there. That is a Kent. I grew up in South Florida, and we had a huge Kent tree in our front yard. This produces a fantastic mango. It's really, really pretty. It's big too, and unlike most mango trees that produce big mangoes that, that are not generally prolific producers, the Kent is an exception. It will produce large mangoes up to two pounds and it produces a lot of them which is why we love this tree and I decided that I had to have one in my home orchard when I moved over here so off in the distance is another Glen mango that little guy right there that little guy that's a Glen mango that I transplanted I almost lost that tree almost died on me and what happened was that um <clears throat> I had moved it and you can see it's on a little bit of a slope. Let me see, you can see it's on a little bit of a slope here. A lot, the, the lot is a little bit of a slope here. So the water was n not actually going into the into the root system. They would, it, when I would water, it would drain off the surface. It would just drain off the tree and it wouldn't actually soak the root ball. And uh, I caught it just in time before the tree died completely on me. 
and what I did is I made a I put some bricks around these little trees that are in the slope I put a brick around the edge to level it off and then I added dirt to make a flat plane right around the root ball and then hold some of the water in so I could water the trees now and they would actually so the water would stay around the base of the tree and it would soak into the root ball that little that's an Alfonso mango there that one had the same problem let me see if I can show you what I mean by that so you can see this is the Alfonso mango you see right there the base see the, the, the little brick brick perimeter on just one side of the of the of the roots and you can see that um, it basically was I, I put those there and then I filled them in with dirt to create like a little earthen mound to keep the water from flowing away and staying near the root ball and I did the same for the um, the little glen mango over there you might be able to see the little rocks there see them there hidden in the grass and stuff so there's some rocks there the little earthen level and I added some dirt to keep it level off same here with this tree this is a sour sop which I happen to love also see that cement block right there same deal one side of the tree where the water you know where, where, where it's the slope it goes goes down pretty fast I put them there and added dirt to level them off so they some of the water would stay there and it wouldn't flow off this tree here is a um oops sorry what did I do there no, I don't want to do that I don't want to focus magnifier what the, what the heck that? there that tree right there against the wall that is a mame sapote tree this is a very tropical tree which is native to Mexico and uh, Central America this tree almost died on me last year with that with that cold spell that I was mentioning earlier it really really almost died it was like it had like several big branches that completely died back and I was just barely able to keep it alive <coughs> so I decided that this year I was not going to risk it dying on me again so I pulled it out put it in a pot and uh, put it up next to this wall where it can receive some of the heat from the wall um, even so even with that wall it's still it could still get too cold for this tree here so I've kept it in a pot so that I can actually put it on a hand truck and move it into my um, uh, it's like a little porch area I have behind my house where I can where it's enclosed I can close off the windows and uh, keep the wind and the cold from actually doing any severe damage to this tree I don't know what I'm gonna do with this one actually I, I offered to give it to my dad in South Florida he didn't want it um, I don't think it's well suited for Central Florida some people say that you can grow this in Orlando and even though I'm not in Orlando, I'm in Brevard County, it's actually, uh, I think it's still too cold for this tree here, honestly. So I had to uproot it. And where it was at, originally, I was going to, I'm, I'm going to use that spot to place two, uh, two Liberty Apples that are coming in, in in January. Two Liberty Apples, and um, as I heard, Liberty Apples are actually pretty good. They're, they're really disease resistant. They resist... They don't get apple scab. They resist fire blight. They're just, they're not as big as some of the other apples, but who cares, man? As long as that tree can, has that much disease resistance, it's worth having. So, again, one more shot here of my, and it's sunlight. The sun, when it gets this, when the sunlight is this harsh, it fools the camera sensor into thinking that the scene is actually brighter than it is, and so it exposes it does a little under it underexposes the image and I don't want to fiddle with this camera settings right now so let me see if I can move the camera to a different location and get a better view of this yeah I wanted to record this video this is um my Eureka lemon tree notice how it's packed with lemons I was, I was saying, they're all turning yellow and stuff. They're all ripening properly. HLB, this Huang Long Bing disease, doesn't seem to affect the sour citrus, like the lemons, you know, you know the limes and stuff like that, as much as it seems to affect the sweet citrus, like oranges. It's really hard on oranges, but the lemons, I, mean, I, I know they get affected by it just the same, but they seem to be okay with it. 
they can deal with it and move on. It's, and eventually, I'm, I'm sure this tree is going to die from it as well. But I'm hoping to get maybe 5, 10 years out of it. And God willing, maybe 15 as well. 15 or 20. I don't need it to last 50 years. 20 years would be fine for me. But, yeah, you can see, man. It's, it's got a quite quite a load of crop of, on, on there. Got quite a crop load. The bottom branches are the ones that, were, that produced the most flowers this year. But you can see near the top... If I can, let me, let me get my glasses on here. It's starting to put fruit out near the top branches. This is one tree that I also spray with that citrus foliar spray. Where is it? I don't see it. I can't. I can't. Oh, there's one right there. So you see the top branches have a have a couple of lime, lemons. They're brand new. That's a brand new. That's a baby lemon. See that? That's about probably a half the way or two-thirds of the way up the tree so it's starting to produce this year when I harvest this fruit I am going to actually prune the tree in the bottom I don't want I don't want the tree producing this much fruit near the bottom because um, although you think it'd be good because it, it's easier to harvest I think it's too much I should have probably thinned some of the fruit out this tree cost me about $150, I think, $160 at um, Rockledge Gardens in uh, Brevard County, Florida. This has been a, this was a good investment. This tree has been the most productive citrus tree I've had. I might buy another citrus tree from Rockledge. I think they seem to produce, they seem to sell you pretty good products, pretty good citrus trees, citrus products. I bought these other trees here against the wall here. These are pineapple guavas these trees against the wall here I bought these from Rockledge Gardens as well I don't know what the heck to do with them I like guava trees and I like I would like to I would like to have pineapple guava hedge but I'm concerned about fruit fly and these things are very aromatic they smell up a storm and I am concerned that they'll start bringing in fruit flies from afar uh, a lot of my neighbors have papaya trees and stuff like that and they don't do anything about the flies so there's always going to be a source of fruit fly around here and so what i need to do is look for fruit that can that doesn't smell as much so that they're not attracted to it or that has a very strong peel very thick peel so that they can't actually with their ovipositor penetrate the skin and and deposit an egg inside and all guavas have a very thin peel and that's that's the problem they smell a storm they smell up a storm because they're very aromatic but they have such a thin peel that these fruit flies love them and they just come in and start like dropping their eggs inside them and what you well, before you know it you have a a source of fruit fly you have a big fruit fly problem in your entire yard i had to uproot one of my guava trees because of that earlier this year my ruby supreme i uprooted it and got rid of it i don't want that in my it had an infestation i just couldn't get rid of it and i got tired of it and said you know what too much trouble any tree that gives me this much trouble doesn't does can't be here so I ripped it up and threw it away. And that was like $200 investment too. That was that was lost. Fair amount of money I lost on that one. But I had to do it in order to protect the other trees in the orchard because when the apricots and the and the peaches and all the other fruit starts producing, if I have a if I have a, a fruit fly infestation in the orchard, then they're going to be all over those other trees too. So yeah. There is my Eureka lemon tree. This is my favorite tree, my favorite citrus tree right now. This is my uh, Meyer lemon tree. You can see it's quite loaded with a crop this year. This tree always produces well for me every year faithful producer I like this tree a lot actually there's one Meyer Dermland that's, that's green that actually surprises me I didn't know that one was there it must have come that must have been that fruit must have been pollinated that flower must have been pollinated much later in the season 
that these, these trees are almost ever very meaning that they're constantly throwing out flowers and stuff citrus is unique you can actually leave it on the tree for as long as you like before harvesting and that's what I do because I have so many lemons in the fridge and it's in the house I just don't have so I leave them on the tree as long as I can okay eventually when they get too ripe they'll fall but it, it takes a long time for them to fall so yeah Um, if you live up north in zone 8 and you think you can't grow citrus, a Meyer lemon might be good for you. They are very cold hardy. Um, I think they could survive zone 8 just fine. And if you live in the coast, like the Pacific Northwest, zone 6 or something like that, and like, um, not zone 6, but Oregon, Washington, near the coast, where you don't get a lot of snow, but you get a lot of cold rain and shit like that. I think you could you could you could get by with a Meyer lemon. You could it could survive and grow. It wouldn't be as productive as it is down in zone nine and lower, but uh, in zone eight, I think it's still possible. And in the and the temperate regions of the higher elevations, it could it could do well too.